I want to start with a prophetic word that the Lord was speaking to me when I was praying this evening for service. Uh, one of the things that God spoke to me is that He wants to break our grid of understanding. All right, and what that means is I was I was contemplating how I've had some great experiences with God over my life. I mean, I've had some good touches of God, and yet to a certain degree, all of those touches of God have happened kind of within one. Uh, 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 one mindset or one track. For instance, when I feel the Holy Spirit on me, there's a certain way I kind of feel the Holy Spirit a lot of times, and I know I know Holy Spirit's ministering to me because I can feel His presence. God wants to break our grid of understanding. Uh, that's the way I understand the Holy Spirit, but God wants us, He wants to break that grid of understanding so He can minister to us different ways that maybe we've not experienced or that we're not used to. It'd be kind of like if you if if you had an egg and you were on the inside of the egg, and it'd be like, this is pretty good. You know, it's nice and safe, and there's plenty of food here, and, and it's a good place to be inside this egg. But God wants to break that egg open, and He wants to bring you out into a whole lot of more uh, things and understanding than what you're used to. One of the reasons I wanted to work so hard was because I like to give to the Lord. And I've always wanted to be in a position where I don't have to take from ministry, but where the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, and where God just provides for me outside ministry. But one of the ways that God has had to break my grid of understanding over the last couple months, uh, especially during the summer, is to cause me to stop working. <laughs> now, that may not seem like much to you. You may think, oh, great, I wish I could stop working and be on a vacation. But I assure you, I'm not on a vacation. <laughs> I assure you, things are happening. And in part, you're eating some of the fruit of those things that are happening. All right? Now, there's a prayer of agreement. There are a lot of people praying. It's not as if, Everything good's happening because Pastor Dave's praying. But you are eating some of the fruit of that as you come into agreement with those things. And I think that's pretty undeniable. Because what the Lord was telling me was giving is great. And I'm not downplaying that because He wants us to be givers. But He wanted to bring me into a place where I was giving myself and not just my money. Does that make any sense to you? Does that make sense to you? And that's that's a very hard place for me to be at because I want to be like the Apostle Paul, not dependent on anyone. Now, I'm not saying I won't work when school starts up or if an odd job comes up here and there, I'll work it. When school starts, I mean, I'll be seven and stuff. It's not like I'm never going to work again. But I'm just saying God wanted me this summer to have my grid of understanding broken. Now, in allowing God to break open my grid of understanding, I have experienced some pretty cool miracles of provision. <laughs> There are some people who believe in what's called voluntary poverty. You know, you you lower yourself and become poor to minister to people. There may be people that do have that gift, but I'm telling you, the real gift isn't voluntary poverty, it's voluntary prosperity. Because you, you can't be poor in the Lord. I mean, now I'm not talking about, I don't mean you're going to have bags of money laying around, but God's going to provide what you need for the work. He's always going to do that if you're walking in His will. And when you lower yourself, some people could say, well, Pastor Dave, you're walking in voluntary poverty. Well, I, I would prefer not to call it that because I know that God is prospering me. And prosperity, one part of that is cash, right? And I could be working my job at rescue and making a lot more cash, but I could be a lot less prosperous because I'm not being obedient to the Lord. And I've experienced some incredible blessings that you you probably... I don't know if you're going to believe them or not, but I don't care. I've shared several times, but I've had even more experiences of what I call heaven time. <laughs> heaven time. Praise God. I love my heaven time. You know, you know, heaven is above time. You understand that, right? A day to the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. We live on earth where there's time, right? This happens, this happens, this happens. You know, that clock's going to tick no matter how much I want it to stop, right? Because I, I live on the earth. But I've had s several experiences of what I call heaven time. One of them was uh, at the end of the school year when all this started to happen, accelerate. You know, I had three days left to sub and the Lord told me to keep them. He'd make provision for that. I showed up to the classroom one day and there were three hours with no students, the first three hours. And then when the time was coming near to an end, uh, I was just lost in the Lord's presence. And uh, I thought, Lord, I don't want to quit yet. And He said, you just keep right on praising me, and I was soaking, I had the iPod playing, and the clock moved, and I know it was right, because the bells and everything were on, right on schedule, the clock moved five minutes, but my iPod had played over 15 minutes before that, that stopped, that's what I call heaven time, heaven exists in a different realm, a different time, and God can take us into heaven time, I've had times, one morning, uh, when I was in here, uh, and I was praying, and I looked at the clock, I think I shared this with Debbie, 
And I thought, man, I only got an, an hour left. I only got an hour. And God, I was getting just having a good time with the Lord. I thought I only got an hour left. That kind of sucks. And I went to the bathroom and I came out and the clock was turned back an hour. God gave me... Now, you can believe that or not believe that, but I don't really care if you believe it because it's my testimony and I experienced it. And I call that heaven time. Now, see, one of the things that God is showing me is that we use faith in money a lot, don't we? I mean, we have to use faith to have money and stuff like that. But it doesn't say... Uh, uh, you know, just that your money will be right if your faith is right. It says without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know what that means? That means that if we want to please God, we need faith. Pleasing God is about a lot more than money. Would you agree with that? Pleasing God is about a lot more than money. So, we shouldn't be skeptical when God wants to work outside of our grid of understanding. When there are things that are happening by faith that are bringing God glory, I mean, I would say that having extra time to pray brings God some glory. I mean, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing that pleases the Father. I mean, I'm not maybe Einstein, but I'm guessing that makes God happy. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him, but with faith, it is possible to please Him. You know, and then I shared the experience of my lawnmower. I got a little push mower and not a very big yard, but I can cut my yard once with it. And sometimes I can get a couple more strips out of it, but then it dies and i got to put gas in. Well, this summer I've had an experience where I cut the yard two full times on one tank of gas, and it was empty because I checked it and I went and bought gas to put in it, but I never put the gas in it. And I cut the yard two full times. I even cut grass I normally don't cut, and it never ran out of gas. And I checked it before I started cutting. That's why I went up and bought the gas. The kids can testify to that. You know, the the most recent thing, Pastor was sharing about food. Uh, well, let me show you this one. We went down to Nashville uh Last week, or it's been a few weeks ago now. I don't know, a couple of weeks, week and a half ago, and whenever it was. I, I, Delaney's not here, so Keith can keep me honest because I lose track of stuff like that. But you know, in Elizabethtown, that's a couple hours from here, right? Isn't it? Two and a half hours. We filled up our that car in Etown. It gets pretty good gas mileage, but not this good. We filled up the car in Etown, drove all the way home. You know, I made a trip to Vivi. I made one or more trips every night, every day over here to pray. I made, it was VBS that week. I made all those trips to drop the kids off of VBS, pick them up from VBS, go to Keith and Toys, drop Silas up, pick Silas up, plus all the normal running around. And, you know, we just filled up the car like on Friday or uh, whenever it was. And I was telling Delany, you know, the thought just kind of hit me that I've been driving this car on the same tank of gas since Elizabethtown. Am I right about that? And she said, yeah, Dave, she said, she said, you're right, unless you put something in that I didn't know about. She said, uh, you're right. We've been driving that car on the same tank of gas since Elizabethtown. <laughs> How many think that's prosperity? Then I went here a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago, I don't know, and I went to Kroger's and I was looking for cheap food. And I went up there and I bought one of those 10-pound bags of chicken that they got back there. That's a good, pretty good buy anyway, but it was marked down to three forty nine, and I bought that bag of chicken. Now, I didn't count the pieces, but I'm telling you, my kids are getting tired of eating chicken. I've grilled that chicken twice. You can believe this or not. I've grilled that chicken twice. I've made stir-fry with that chicken. I've made bean soup with that chicken. And Delany today made another pot of soup with the last of that chicken that was left. Now, I didn't count the pieces, but I'm just guessing. Silas may not be that big, but we're a family of five, and I'm guessing... That chicken went a little bit further than that chicken was supposed to go. It just kept going. Are you hearing me? Now, I don't know why God's doing these strange, unique miracles in my life, but I like it. (laughs) And while I believe that God wants to bless my money too, because money is a part of prosperity, I certainly would not trade what He's doing for the money. I wouldn't do it. And I certainly wouldn't call what I'm doing voluntary poverty. And believe me, it's... Uh, in my flesh, because I want to be a giver, uh, I want to some days get out there and work, but the Lord, uh, you know, keeps drawing me into His presence, and He gets selfish with my time, and I praise God and say, God, be as selfish as you want with my time, because I like the new life a lot. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, there are a lot of days that I wake up before the alarm clock wakes up, because when God's ready to wake me up, I get this. I really do. I get, he taps me on my leg and I wake up. 
Okay, it's time to get up. You guys, I'm out of my mind. I'm just, I am out of my mind. I'm just in His. I have the mind of Christ. I've, another thing, I pray almost every day, Lord, give me the wisdom of Solomon governed by the mind of Christ. Ooh, hallelujah. Who'd like that, huh? Wisdom of Solomon governed by the mind of Christ so I don't make the same mistakes Solomon made. Wow, look at the change in Pastor Dave. That's incredible. Thank you, but I really didn't do nothing. All I do is every morning I say, okay, I submit. I submit. And you know what's going to happen if I stop submitting? I'm going to go back to the old life. That ain't going to happen. But I've learned there's nothing I can do to serve Him but just simply submit and believe. That's what He wants from us. Even when He tells us to do something, He equips us to do it. Do you understand that? When He tells us to... to, I'm going to pick on Regina real quick as we're closing. Not too much, don't worry. Just a little bit. We were coming back from church in VV that one Sunday morning, and the Lord told me, go to King Buffet, and you're going to see someone that you know there. I want you to pray with them. I had no idea about any of it. I was thinking, I didn't, I didn't even say nothing to my kids because they're going to think we're going to eat there, and I didn't have the money to feed them there, to be honest, that day. So, you know, but, you know, we, we went, drove in the King, because it was a very, very, very strong urge, had to get there. And we drove in, and right as we pulled in, Regina was walking out. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to embarrass you. But I said, Regina, you're the person that God sent me to pray. And you know, and Regina accepted Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Regina accepted Jesus. Uh, that's good, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that God's way is better than my way. The air conditioner stopped working here a while back. And the Lord showed me that there was a wire that I had previously fixed I needed to fix when I had prayed on it. And I fixed that. But then He said, go and dump oil on that thing and pray for it. And that thing is a big unit, older unit. It beats and rattles and shakes all over the place, or at least it used to. I dumped oil on the thing and prayed for it. That thing runs so smooth, you've got to go outside to hear if it's even, even working. You do. I mean, you know, wrap your mind around that one. Uh, I'll, oh, okay. Amen. <laughs> the oil helped it, exactly. I didn't get it down inside, though. But yeah, he, the, the anointing oil helped it. Wrap your mind around that, because... But, you know, the thought hit me. Do you think if Jesus prayed for an air conditioner to work, it's going to work? you think He's going to get what He wants? I wasn't praying. Jesus was praying. Do you see this? But you got to make a decision to believe Him. To trust Him. To believe that His way really is better. He really does love you more than you love yourself. He really does have a better plan for you than you could dream up for yourself. 